Now that part in the scripture today about 70 times seven, how do you think the apostle Peter reacted to that? He said, oh my God, really? Because he was thinking seven times is a whole lot. And in scripture, seven is the perfect number. So that's why he chose it, of course. But he said 70 times seven. Now what appears here at first is that somehow when we come to the idea of forgiving, the burden is on the person who receives the forgiveness. It kind of feels that way. But may we go back just a little bit to the Sunday prior to this where it said, if your brother sins against you, go and talk to him. If he doesn't listen, grab another person, talk to him about what the issue is. If not, treat him like a tax collector. Do you remember that? Remember that gospel? The reason I bring it up because there's a balance here. And that balance is that not all the weight of forgiving is on the person who is asked that he be, that he give forgiveness. What is important here is to understand first that forgiving another person is not about feelings. If we only forgave a person when it felt right, there wouldn't be much forgiveness in this world. Do you get what I'm saying? Because something is not good here, so it's hard to feel good about that. But it's one of the deepest aspects of love because love doesn't, although it includes feelings, it is not about feelings, it's about a choice. And what is that choice? It's the choice to do the right thing. And the right thing is that we're always helping people move towards a good life here on earth and then to eventually to be in heaven. So what this means is when I offer forgiveness to another person, I do not want to get in the way of this person finishing his or her journey and making heaven. We want people to be in heaven. Now, on our earthly way to think about that, we are saying to ourselves, well, am I going to have to be in heaven with this person? I hope heaven is large enough that I can get to a place where I don't have to deal with this character, okay? That's the human part of it. And we know that's the case. It's like I prayed for people to get to heaven and I always said sooner rather than later. You know, that kind of feeling. Those are all normal human experiences. This particular gospel wants to point that out. But that forgiveness is important. What about the words, the Our Father? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is a prayer that we pray every day. And Jesus taught us that prayer because forgiveness is an important part of what it means to live in this world because we're all growing and we make mistakes of all kinds. But there are a couple of things that we need to look at inside this particular issue. And it has to do with this. If there are repeated offenses, there is a phrase called enabling. Do you know what that means? You've heard the word before. Enabling is that I do something for another person that they should very well do their own self. And in doing so, Whatever the problem is, I'm continuing the problem by enabling rather than helping. Are we clear about that? So enabling is not helping. Do we understand the dynamic of enabling? Of course, because often we're dealing with our loved ones and that's very, very painful sometimes. But what is important is, <laughs> just like in the reading, not the reading today, but the reading from last Sunday, is that there is, there are rather, definite boundaries. So if there is repeated offenses, then we sit down and we talk to this person 
and we figure out how we're going to go forward. Now, this doesn't mean that every Sunday we're going to have chicken dinner together, okay? It means that our, our life, our, the way in which we talk with each other may vary and may differ. And it doesn't mean I don't forgive that person, but it means that probably for now and for so long in the future, it may be better that we don't celebrate Thanksgiving together. It isn't that we haven't forgiven the person, but the dynamic is such too volatile. It's a little bit like this, is when you try to put the fire out, you put it out with water and not with gasoline. Do you get me? Okay. And we know that people walk away from Thanksgiving dinner saying they're never, ever going to do another Thanksgiving in their whole entire life or in heaven. You know that feeling. So, when we do this with other people, it's important to understand what enabling is that is doing towards another what they need to do themselves. However, there are boundaries and limits to what we can do. And this is important because this is where we express and share the deep forgiveness that God has taught us. It's that forgiveness when Jesus is being nailed to the cross and he says, forgive them for they know not what they do. <clears throat> I have had the privilege, together with psychiatrists, other psychologists, other pastoral care workers, to look deeply inside certain human behavior. And I can tell you that it's so much more complicated than we might realize. And that's why this reading here is important for us. We may, even if it's a person, our own child or our own sibling, we think often that we know the whole story. But I want to assure you, it is not possible to know the whole story. It is possible to know a lot of the story, to understand certain dynamics, but it's very complicated when you look inside of what's happening to a person who is going through all of these different kinds of difficulties and challenges. It is very complicated. So from our part, <clears throat> we start like this. I'm not going to enable this person but I'm gonna do what I can to support his or her process to become better at living their lives. And that has limits to it. And I need to stick firmly to those limits, say yes when it's appropriate, to also say no when it's appropriate. And all of that is done with the spirit of being able to forgive this person and not get in the way of their also marching forward and getting to heaven. Because all of us, whether we like the person or not, we need to do that process. When I say one loving act at a time, means we support others in their way as they go towards heaven. And it is appropriate, especially for parents, to point out to children these things that are right or wrong, but to point them out in such a way that we do not downgrade that person or disrespect that person in such a way that he or she feels worse by talking to you than better. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Okay, this is not easy stuff. This is hard stuff to do. So in our process, the key issue is this. Choose forgiveness. Call upon the Holy Spirit to help you in this process and to remember two important issues. One is, I cannot tell a loved one, even if that loved one is a spouse, I can't tell them into a better place. They have to choose to go to a better place. Are we clear? I can't tell them there. So all kinds of homilies and uh, I hope you don't use my name too often. Well, Father Dale said in church, 
Father Dale said in church, so I sound like a hammer man, you know. No, take responsibility for your own words, but remember that we don't beat people up. That's not how we get them to a better place. We raise them up. We don't push them down. <coughs> now, can't help but touch this factor. <coughs> when I say this is not easy, sometimes we're very angry inside. And that's akin to this issue about I'm digging myself into a hole. What's the best way to get out of that hole? Is to stop digging. So I have to wait until the anger cools so I can respond in a way that is not disrespectful, more disrespectful to this person. Do you hear what I'm talking about here? This dear family is not <coughs> What we do in that situation is to call upon the gift of our confirmation and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to be wise in how we listen and wise in how we speak. In, do, in doing so, we can, will be able to handle some of the most difficult processes that happen in our life. But I can tell you this, It'll never happen by trying to tell somebody to that space. It won't happen. The next thing is, <coughs> excuse me. Understand that we may not know the entire story and that's why forgiveness becomes so important. Because there may be a deep hurt with inside another person that you, you and I can't see. We only receive the results of that. When we respect that, we'll be able to say the same words that Jesus taught us. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is a powerful statement that helps us to deal with these difficult situations. Lastly, in the various processes that I've worked with doctors and other psychologists and pastoral care workers, the results were not always good. They did not have a good ending. And I've had it in my own family friends, and so forth. It is important to remember in this process that even though from our side it doesn't look like anything worked, God never stops helping working for that person. And so we stop and we say, Lord, I would like a different outcome here. I'd like this to be better, but somehow it's not better. This is where the gift of the Holy Spirit coming from our confirmation tells us God is bigger and wiser than any problems that we might face. Though it is not the success we look for, God has not forgotten this person. He will take care of that person no matter what the issue is. Because we heard him say, forgive them for they know not what they do.